comes by the pool of Bethesda, how many people did he heal that day? Just one. Just one. See, there's timing on certain miracles. You can't put God in a box. But if God put a gift in the box for you, use your key and unlock it and release it into the earth, then it might be done in earth as it is in heaven. So the gift of special faith is different. The power gifts include the gift of special faith, the gifts of healing, and the working of miracles. The gift of special faith, it comes upon you to do something miraculous. The gifts of healing is power to heal the sick of various sicknesses, diseases, or infirmity. And the working of miracles is the supernatural ability to perform miracles by the Holy Spirit. Do you remember when Moses threw his staff down and became a serpent? What gift was that? Working of miracles. Not a trick question. <laughs> okay, when, 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 when we are operating in these gifts, it's different than when we're just praying for the sick and trusting God to do something because he'll heal through that as well. That's not the gifts of healing in operation. That's the prayer of faith. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But when we have the gifts of healing flowing through us, and somebody comes up into that atmosphere when the gifts are being given out, they can get healed like that. Yes, yes. And then the minister that's used says, wow, you wouldn't believe what happened last night. Well, we're going to do it again tonight. Nothing happens. Yeah. Because they're gifts. They're not things that we can operate every time. <clears throat> so, praise the Lord. So they're broken up into three categories. Speaking gifts, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. Revelation gifts that reveal something. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and distinguishing of spirits. I want to talk about tongues tonight. Because I believe that tongues catapults us into the use of the other gifts. That's right. Do you have to have tongues to operate in the other gifts? Mm -hmm. no. no. You can operate in any gift at any time as the Spirit wills. So tongues is not a requirement, but it's certainly a tool. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. I want you to... Turn with me, if you will, to Acts. And, and before we go there, I've just got to share one thing. John 5, 19. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but only that which he sees the Father do. For whatsoever things he doeth, those also doeth the Son. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Here's the point. Jesus didn't do anything that it wasn't the Father's will. Yeah. Okay, now here's the thing. People say, well, the God of the Old Testament is different than the God of the New Testament. God's dealing with man may be different, but he's the same God. Yeah. Yeah. And people say, well, I don't know, you know, maybe God put this sickness on you for this or that because of this Old Testament verse. This is what I say to him. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Did Jesus turn anybody, anybody away for healing? No, no. Well, one person he did. The Syrophoenician woman, yeah, right? Yeah, but when she persevered, he healed anyway, right? Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. If, if Jesus is the express image of the Father, any question about God's character in the Old Testament is resolved in the person of Jesus, isn't it, in the New Testament? Mm -hmm. yes. So when you look to God and decide what His will is for your life, look at what Jesus did. That's right. And that's His will for your life. Remember the man who said, if you're willing, Jesus, I will be made clean. What was Jesus' response? I'm willing. I'm willing. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Yes, yes. He's a God of love. Amen. He loves you so much, He died on the cross for you. Yeah. You think He won't heal you? Well, I'm going to die for you, but I want you to live sick in this life. Yeah, come on. It doesn't make sense, does it? No. Mm -hmm. He wants to bring us out that he might bring us in. Yes. What did he do? He brought them out of Egypt through the wilderness and then bring them into a land of Canaan flowing with milk and honey. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you're stuck somewhere in there, it's not over. Let him bring you all the way out and all the way in. Amen. Is that good? Yes. He loves you so much. He will withhold no good thing from those that seek him. Tongues. Such a misunderstood subject. There's a book, uh, it's on, on my website, on the subject of tongues, on davidherobedian.com. Free access, free download. You can 
Email it to people, have fun with it. You can buy one tonight if you want. If you can't afford one, we'll give you one. But it talks about the four different types of tongues. And I want to want to talk about this tonight. Scripture talks about four different types of tongues by the same Holy Spirit. Remember we talked about the gifts of healing? Gifts, plural. Diversities of tongues? Plural. Right? Discerning of spirits? Plural. So it's one name of something, but there's many things underneath that banner. You can't just do a headline on these things and say, well, that's what that must be. And you can't say, well, I've experienced it that way, so what that person's experience is not, not right because I, I've experienced it different and that's not what it, I haven't experienced that, so that's not for today. Come on. There's four types of tongues. One is your personal prayer language in tongues. Amen. That's between you and God. Anyone can receive that gift. The Apostle Paul said, I, I, I wish that uh, he said, I speak in tongues more than you all. What happened on the day of Pentecost? They all spoke in tongues. They all spoke in tongues, and the Greek word is dialectos, which is dialects, known dialects. Now, here's the thing. For each man heard him speaking in his own dialectos, his own dialect, his own language. They didn't need an interpreter, did they? Ah. So that's diverse kinds of tongues that needs no interpreter. Why? They're unknown to the speaker, but they're known to the hearer. Mm -hmm. If you were off in an airport in Japan, and let's say you were a young boy or a young girl, and you got lost in the airport, and everybody's speaking Japanese, and your mother or father's looking for you, and you're yelling out the word, Mommy, over, you're over, whatever's going on, all of, all of a sudden, an English word is being spoken in the midst of that crowd. It may seem like chaos, but you would hear the voice of your child, Absolutely. wouldn't you? Uh, uh, yep. And if you were walking and you heard somebody speaking English and you were in a foreign land, you would pick up English out of the crowd, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. That's why there's 16 language groups mentioned in Acts chapter 2 when they hear them speaking in tongues. And they each hear them speaking in their own language because they're able to hear out of that chaos their own language. They pick it up with their ear. They don't need an interpreter. They're hearing them in their own language. That is diverse kinds of tongues. Tongues unknown to the hearer, but unknown to the speaker, but known to the hearer. There's a second type of tongues called ministerial tongues. Why are they ministerial tongues? Well, we named them that. Okay? But here's why we named them that. We named them that because they minister to somebody. Now, here's the thing. When you have a tongue in a congregation, a supernatural utterance that comes upon a person in the congregation, let's say the person that's at the pulpit, all of a sudden a person gets up and they say, I believe I have a tongue, or the, pro and the, the pastor or the preacher says this, go ahead, we'll, we'll hold the service because we, we want to obey God. The Holy Spirit never interrupts himself. However, everything will be done decently and in order. And it will witness in the minister spirit that there's something coming forth from the Lord. That person will get up, all of a sudden they'll sit down, and somebody else will get up and interpret that, mm -hmm. that the congregation might be edified or built up. The gifts always profit the church, not just the person, in a public assembly. Privately, when a person prays in tongues, he or she is to pray that they might interpret. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Four types of tongues, four types of tongues. The first one, diverse tongues, unknown to the speaker, but known to the hearer, needs no man to interpret. In the congregation, public assembly, one gets up in tongues, another interprets the tongues. That the congregation might be edified. So clearly a distinction between the one that no man needs to interpret because they already have the natural language where they know. The other is there needs to be an interpreter. It's unknown to the speaker and unknown to the hearers, but supernaturally. You'll be able to hear it back in your head, in your own language, and you'll be able to speak it back up. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 1, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you might prophesy. What, what, what's God's desire? Follow after spiritual gifts, but prophesy. But why would he want us to prophesy? Well, let's find out. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Wait a second. 
If he speaks not unto men, but unto God, <clears throat> for no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. This is a different type of tongue than the one that's interpretable. Because no man understandeth him, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. God's not going to allow anybody to tap your line. That's good. But, including the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You ever, you ever wonder you, you pray one thing and it's all, all hell breaks loose again? You've been praying in tongues, it wouldn't have happened. Mm. Okay, something to think about. Okay, now here's the deal. When you're in the congregation and you speak in an God will allow that line to be tapped. You know why? Because it's not for you, it's through you. And it's for somebody in the congregation. And here's what happens you'll speak in an unknown tongue. Somebody else will get up and interpret. It'll be two white boys, and there'll be some Asian person walk in, or somebody from Zimbabwe. Yeah, come on. Right? Mm -hmm. Or Mexico, and they'll look and they'll be like, I speak both languages, and I just heard a perfect dialect from my tribe. That's right, come on. And there's only yeah. 84 of us in the world right. that speak like that, yeah. and I know all 84. And the person that just got up and interpreted gave a perfect translation of that. Truly God is in the midst. Hallelujah. Right? Amen. Yes. Another thing that happens is sometimes missionaries will be somewhere mm -hmm. and they'll want to share the gospel with somebody but they don't speak their language. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God will come on them. And I know people that have had this happen on yeah, different occasions. Mm -hmm. It's supernatural yeah. in nature. And they'll begin to suddenly speak. And they'll hear themselves speaking in English. That's right, come mm -hmm. on. The person will hear them speaking in their native language. Yes. The person will speak back in their native language, and they'll hear it in English. It'll last for X amount of minutes, maybe half an hour. The person will come to Christ, after which they can't speak each other's language anymore. That's right, come mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. That's God. Amen. I knew a woman named Mom Carlene. She was down in... Uh, the Dominican Republic, and she was preaching with an interpreter. And she was preaching on the glory of God. And she kept on talking about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. And uh, while she was saying Holy Ghost, the person was translating it, Holy Phantom. You know, ghost, phantom, right? Espiritu Fantasma. <clears throat> and so people were like looking at her like, is she one of those new age people? talking about the holy phantom, you know? So it's a mistranslation of what's occurring, and people are perplexed because they don't know whether to receive her or not, yet they're, they're, they're leaning in, but yet this holy phantom thing is messing them up. And the person that they had interpret wasn't even a Christian, right? But it was the only person that, really knew, that they knew of. Here's what happened. The Holy Spirit speaks to her. Just begin to walk up and down the aisles and just let me use your tongue. She didn't speak a lick of Spanish. Except, you know, like, gracias, you know, taco burrito, taco bell. Okay. So she just obeys God, and she starts walking up and down the aisle of this church. And she's just speaking in tongue. Anyway, this goes on, and she finishes this and speaks in tongues for about ten minutes with no interpreter. And she's like, Lord, this is really outside my theological understanding, but I'm going to obey you. All of a sudden, people are getting up out of their seats, they're coming to the altar, and they're repenting, and the glory of God falls. And she's like, oh my. What happened? What happened? But she knew she'd obeyed God because she could feel the presence. She could feel the confirmation of his, 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 his love upon her. Afterwards, there was a man sitting in the back row. He was a Spanish professor at the Dominican College there, the university. And he taught English. And this is what he said to her afterwards. He says, do you know what happened? She says, oh, the Lord has done a mighty work. The Lord has done a mighty work. He says, no, do you know what you did? And she's like, well, I just, the Lord told me just to let me have his, my tongue. And, 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 and I, just, I just spoke in tongues. He said, you spoke in the most perfect Castilian Spanish I've ever heard in my life. He says, and where they were making a mistake by using the word Espiritu Fantasma, Holy Phantom, when you said Holy Ghost. 
because that's your King James translation. But in the Spanish reign of Valera, it's Holy Spirit. They didn't know how to translate it. It was confusing the people. And when you began to speak in tongues, you picked up your message in Spanish exactly where you left it off in English where you were stuck. And you preached on the glory of God, and that's why they came to the end. I remember one time, <laughs> I was with a, a Jewish guy who had become a Messianic Jew, and uh, I was with a, a guy named, by the name of Carlos. We went into the room to pray. We held hands, and we were praying, and all of a sudden, Carlos began to speak in tongues with no interpreter. And, you know, when you're in a small group, you can pray in tongues with no interpreter, and there's liberty there, you know. It's not like you're in front of a congregation and you're taking up everybody else's time. But when a few of you are together, it's okay to pray in tongues and ask the Lord to give a word of knowledge or interpretation. If he doesn't, there's liberty, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what happens. He starts to speak in tongues. Well, all of a sudden, this, this Carlos, right, from uh, Puerto Rico, starts speaking in Hebrew. And then he starts to sing in Hebrew. Well, Mark, Mark Divini, I'll give you his first and last name, he looked, and he looked at me like, what is this guy from Puerto Rico speaking in Hebrew for? God was doing it as a sign or a wonder for Mark. And afterward, he got done, and I said to him, I said, Carlos, I said, do you by chance know what language you were speaking in? And he said, well, I just, you know, I felt... I was supposed to yield my tongue to the Holy Spirit. I was supposed to speak in tongues. I said, yes. I said, but did you know the language you were speaking in? Well, people that speak in tongues normally get attacked for not having an interpreter during a private prayer time. So he kind of became a little defensive. I said, Carlos, I'm going somewhere with this. Let me, you know, ask you some questions. He looked, he said, okay. I said, do you speak any other languages other than English? He said, well, obviously I'm fluent in Spanish. I said, but any other languages other than English and Spanish? And he said, well, no. I said, well, do you speak any, any Hebrew by chance? And he said, well, I, I do know the word shalom. <laughs> Didn't even pronounce shalom right. <laughs> okay? So Mark looks over at him like, goy. You know, goy. You know? And so I said, Mark, I said, you were raised with the hair in New York City and the whole nine yards. And in Jewish, I said, do you speak Hebrew? He said, we have studied Hebrew. I said, can you tell our brother Carlos what language he was speaking in? He said he was declaring the high praises of God from the Psalms in the Old Testament. Amen. Word for word. And this caused Mark to come down another thousand cubits toward you know, the water that flows in the sanctuary. And it caused him to get more mature and have a hunger. Do so you see how the gifts, mm -hmm. when properly operated, even though we don't understand them at the time, you have to step out on the water and leave the other 11 behind? Mm -hmm. They will result, when properly operated in, in humility and they'll point to Jesus. Yeah. They'll profit the church with all. They'll build up the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. They'll strengthen people in their faith. And they'll cause people to say, God is truly in our midst. First type of tongues, diverse tongues, unknown to the speaker, but known to the hearer because they speak that dialect. The second time is tongues with interpretation. Tongues that minister to somebody. They minister and build up the body of Christ. The third type of tongues is private prayer language. Turn 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13. Wherefore, him, let him that speak in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding. I want to look at verse 3 real quick. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men for edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Your personal prayer language is to edify you. Amen. Tongues with interpretation is to edify others. Prophecy is to edify others. But let me ask you a question. If you get prayed up privately, do you think you'll be more effective publicly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, here's what often happens in the church. 
What often happens in the church, we have a lot of prayerless people that show up to a full gospel service, and they're like, oh, I can speak in tongues here during worship. Well, that's all fine. You can do that as long as you're not disruptive. I do it. I go to the prayer room at the International House of Prayer. I'll speak in tongues for two hours. I don't bother anybody. Why? Because they got all this worship going on. Yeah. And that's an atmosphere you're in the prayer room. Mm -hmm. now, I don't lean over somebody's ear and speak in tongues in their ear. That would be, that would be disruptive. It would be out of order. Mm -hmm. But in that environment, it's in order. Mm -hmm. But if I were to come in here and say, well, you know, I didn't really spend a lot of time in prayer this week, so instead of a sermon today, I'm just going to speak in tongues for an hour. Mm. <laughs> and there's no interpreter. How many times would you come back for that? Yeah. <laughs> right? And then I would leave refreshed. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, brother. David feels good. David feels very good. <laughs> okay, but if I pray in tongues and my spirit gets lit up, I build myself up on my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, as Jude 120 says. And then I come in here, I've got a word from heaven. Yeah, now you get edified, and the body of Christ is built up. But if I don't get prayed up, I don't have anything to give out. Peter and John said, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, we give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And immediately strength came into his ankle bones and began to walk and leap and praise God. And because of this miracle, it opened the door for the gospel to be preached. In Acts chapter 4, verse 4 says, the number of believers came to be about 5,000. When you pray in tongues privately, you'll have power publicly. Prayerlessness <coughs> results in powerlessness. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. No prayer, no power. Mm -hmm. Well, when you don't know what to pray for in English as you ought, the Holy Spirit helps you in your weaknesses and mm -hmm. makes groaning, makes intercession for you with groanings that words cannot express. <coughs> Romans 8.26 so, the point of this matter is, we've talked about three types of tongues. Diverse tongues, dialects, unknown to the speaker, but known to the hearer. Tongues with interpretation, unknown to the speaker, unknown to the hearer, but somebody interprets. And you can interpret your own tongues as well. If nobody else does it, you do it. Ask God for that gift. It's a complimentary gift. You know what often happens? Sometimes a person will get up and speak in tongues. The person that God gave the interpretation to won't obey. Make them look foolish. Who has a greater sin? The sin of silence. The third type of tongues is a private prayer language between you and God that edifies you, not them. But if you get edified, built up, you start to bubble over, you'll edify them with other gifts. Prophecy will begin to flow. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. And then the fourth type of tongues is tongues for intercessory prayer, travail, or birthing. And Romans 8.26 talks about it. When we don't know what to pray for, we are. the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses and makes intercession for us with groanings the words cannot express. I don't know how many women are in here that have had children, but you had to birth some things that weren't very pleasant at the time. Conception may have been more pleasant than birthing, but motherhood and seeing the child grow is better than both. That's rewarding, isn't it? And what happens is, in Galatians 4.19, the Apostle Paul says, I now travail in childbirth for you, till Christ be formed in you. He's talking to believers. See, Christ was in them, but he wasn't fully formed. They were babes. They were making mistakes. And there are times when the spirit of tongues will come upon you that's intercessory tongues of groanings yeah, that words God. cannot express. Mm -hmm. And it becomes so intense, it's like comparable to giving birth. I've had it happen to me a few times in my life. And when it comes upon you like that, the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will literally birth something in the realm of the Spirit. And all that, within the next 48 hours, all kinds of stuff starts to happen. But literally, you feel like you're in the pangs of childbirth. And some people have a gift of intercessory prayer and operate in that commonly. But they'll do it privately most of the time. In fact, they'll have that come on them in a service and people will think, what is wrong with her? Yeah. Well, she is flat out weird when them granola bar Christians, flaky, fruity, and nutty, get her out. 
You don't know what God's using her for. Yeah, come on. You've got your intellectual teaching gift that lost its giftedness, but you've got right doctrine, brother. They're birthing things in the spirit mm -hmm. so that hearts will be open to receive that teaching gift that lost the anointing and it works anyway, which makes you think you're more anointed. And it's really them who paid the price. <laughs> While you're over there looking at them with disdain. Mm -hmm. When we get to heaven, there, he's going to wipe away some tears from every eye. And we're going to be like, oops, sorry. <laughs> and Jesus is going to say, my blood cleansed you. My grace is sufficient. Come on in. Enter the rest of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, tongues, interpretation of tongues equals prophecy. I'll give me an example. If prophecy edifies other people and private tongues edifies you, tongues with interpretation edifies others too, doesn't it? Why would he rather you prophesy than speak in tongues? Because it edifies other people. Would you rather have food to feed one person or food to feed a hundred? Food to feed one is good. Food to feed a hundred is excellent, right? So if you'll take your little fish and loaves in prayer with your prayer tongue, before the Lord, he'll multiply it with prophecy in the congregation and feed 5,000. But if you won't use your gift, you bury your talent, or if you won't spend time alone with God, and you don't give him what you got, he won't multiply it because you never gave it to him for him to multiply. A seed in your hand is the most it will ever be. Once it leaves your hand and you sow it into his hand, it's the least it will ever be. So in your hand, it's the most it will ever be. In his hand, it's the least it will ever be. Because he always multiplies anything you give him. I heard somebody say this the other day. Whatever you give a woman, she'll multiply. So if you give her hell, you'll have it back in multiplication. <laughs> if you give her heaven, she'll multiply heaven back. Amen. So treat your women good. Amen. Amen? Amen. And you'll get a multiplication of it back. There you go. <laughs> we're going to go through these and we're going to close to them. Tongues, four types. Private prayer language between you and God, no man understandeth you. But pray that you might interpret so you can start to operate in that gift and get more comfortable for the congregation. Second type, tongues with interpretation. <coughs> Stereo tongues, they administer things to people, they minister to people. Tongues with interpretation that the body of Christ might be edified. Third type, diverse tongues like on the day of Pentecost. No man needed to interpret because they spoke the language even though the person speaking didn't know the language. And the fourth type is deep groaning Tongues for intercessory prayer that birth things in the spirit. Amen? Okay. Prophecy, it's hearing from God and speaking to man. Not just God's mind, but also his heart. He has a heart of love. So when you prophesy to somebody, it normally comes through four gifts. Either prophecy will operate through word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. They reveal things, and then you can prophesy. God will reveal something by word of wisdom. Word of wisdom is supernatural application of knowledge or facts, or a word of wisdom is to do something that you would never think of on your own. And people are like, wow, how'd you think of it? You're so wise. 